I'm going to attempt to survive and beat Ark Svartalfheim in 100 days, but against a community of survivors that can choose to help me or troll me. Let's get into it. We wake up on the shores of Golden Coast at the dead of night, not as cold as we feared, but dwarfed to the adventure awaiting, weak and fearful of what lurks in the night. Right, how cold is it? Is it as cold as Fjorda? I guess. <laughs> Is it that bad? Passing by fellow travellers setting home on the beach, we eventually cross to find trees and rocks to allow some cloth clothing and a torch to cook our first meal and prepare us for the road ahead. We got flints, right, we're, we're stepping it up now. We got um, that thing, a torch. That's gonna keep us nice and toasty if it gets even colder. It's, a bit, it's not as cold as uh, Fjorda, which is a good news. <laughs> As dawn breaks and we nimble on north to the great unknown gathering and crafting a full suit of cloth and a slingshot to tickle something, we encounter a fat headed Anonychus, or rather a Dryptosaurus that screams and shakes us into confusion with a narrow escape. It's like a, it's, it's like a fat headed Anonychus. Oh my God. What the? No. I'm gonna die. No. Back, have one of these in your head. A drop drop. What? A Go, go away. What the hell is that? I actually survived. <laughs> the hell is that? I think this is... I don't know what the hell that is. What the hell is that? Can I knock... Do you reckon I can knock this thing out? I can't, I can't shoot it. I don't know that much. What the hell is this thing? Whatever this thing is, we're knocking it out with a slingshot. Um, I don't... Oh, it's gone. What the hell is that? What the hell was that? Have a nice day. Let's achieve a bit of on that glide game. Well, no, but I'm just gonna go do some gliding myself, so I'll see you later. After meeting our first survivor and moonwalking away, toying with taming anything, we realize more levels are needed as we set further north. Running back into the feathered fat head, becoming its food, narrowly escape even larger carnivores and pass an inviting cove. Finally able to craft bowlers and clubs, we take to trapping and clubbing to sleep our first dinosaur, a parasaur dubbed Paraclark, a curious parrot named Polly, and take shelter for the night with another survivor, keeping us warm with their bonfire, trading stories and resources and await the next dawn. See you later mate, good luck to you. Hope you can uh, survive the noise. It's a bit dark out there, there's some scary folk. Just, um... Uh, just if you just, oh, what you got, what you got here? Oh, that's lovely, thank you. So we're at Murray's old wall project at home. Have a little more chutney, thank you very much, mate. I might see you soon, see you in another life, brother. Right then, let's go. Waving farewell to our new friends, we set course for the cove just past. Gingerly swimming on Paraclark as piranhas lurk. Maywings startle us and a cave found, tucked away and sparking a curious traveler to investigate. Epic entrance. Metal delicious. Don't say there's like evil down here. If there's evil, I have to turn and run. Please be vacant passing stone cold walls and architecture down a winding path, cautiously making way fearing what dwells, the concerns quickly fade away as we are dawned with a beautiful opening, filled with aberrant mushrooms and tranquility as we pass exotic milk gliders and travel deeper still. I want that, I want that mowing in my life, I need, I need those milkers. I just heard that out loud. Moving on! The cave finally reaches an end, illuminating a door, and reaching it we find a grand hall, surrounded by dwarven statues and three further doors. Setting up camp and fearing what's to come, we leave our belongings and new companions to ignite our curiosity further and choose the left door. Climbing an endless stair where we find our first hostile cave dwellers, which fortunately being nocturnal lay fast asleep, allowing us to tiptoe by. Though it was all for nothing as we're greeted with the next inhabitants who quickly chew through us and take us back to camp. This is the end. All right, here they come. Back lead is here. Oh my God, he jumps at me. Well, I guess that was inevitable, wasn't it? But with a second wind, we travel again, 
looking for an alternative path and find it, or at least thought we did, as we realise we're left in a ditch with no escape, no haven, and to no end, as we realise all we can do now is sit and wait for hunger to kill us and start again tomorrow. That's it! I can't, that's nothing I can do! Why, why did I do it? The curious mind has led me to a curious end. And we're stuck, this is it, but there's... there's I think at that we're gonna leave it at that for the night. Waking up to a new dawn, a last stab at the mine to the jaws of a megalo, it's time we set on back to find a location to hold up in. But not before the realization that the way down was much easier than the way up, with no ramp out. Fortunately, a few survivors arrive to help me up, guide my way back to the exit and cross out to land. But with some poor judgement on swimming and forgetting Barry's admire rivers, a stun lock spells an inevitable doom for Paraclark and me. No! 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 Oh! No! 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 Ah, no! Um, um, oh crap. Uh, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> No! Ah, oh, Paraclark! No! <laughs> Running back for Prolly, we tame ourselves a new parasol and gear up for a safe location. Finding an ominous shrine, we venture towards it, teleporting us to an island floating in the sky. Whilst already occupied, we'd been given temporary access to build some sullies, and as the night settled in, the temperature limiting any further journeying, we find a dodo at our door. Thinking it to be wild, we engage, only to be attacked, and claiming a title not many in Ark can attest to, we died to a dodo. Is this? It's a... <laughs> it's a tame dodo! I didn't know! No! Oh, God. I thought it was a wild dodo! I'm going to die of freezing birds! <laughs> no! No, 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 no! no. Go away! As dawn breaks and we realise we need to level up with narcotic crafting next on the list, we set out for Crystal to help our spoiling of meat. With other survivors flocking to guide us to the next nearest resource location, avoiding any dangerous wilds, we finally reach our destination. But gasping for water and attempting to drink something, we accidentally pick up a wild Bronto egg, angering its mother and swatting us to another grave. We run back as quick as we can, gathering back up supplies, hack away at the crystal we can and begin travelling back home, only to run into wolves that take us out and prolly for good. Waking up to a new day and forgetting to build a roof, invited some fellow travellers to have some fun with blue paint and adorn some luscious locks as we open our door to an audience of dodos. Preparing for the next mission, grinding nearby resources, levelling us closer towards our engrams needed, we make the fatal mistake of annoying the dodo squad, having our arrows stolen from a passing pego, dying to said pego and losing it all to neighbours who were just trying to help. After some more dodo trolling and a few early naps, we finally make some progress as we craft a forge for metal, a smithy set for our next tier, but much more metal needed to ready us up for a tame we desperately need. A few cooking pots grinded out for levelling done, passers-by told us of a convenient metal spawn directly under the base, holding not just that resource but gold ore on top. A new resource never seen before, but found to be another use to smelt for that precious metal. A bunch of dodos shot and burned, taming tools crafted and saddle prepared, we travel back via parachute to where we saw our first milk glider, the Aberrant Cave. Sadly, since being occupied by other survivors diminished the original wild spawns, needing us to travel back out. But with blue variant rexes covering our direct route out, left us a swim against the current and straight into a snap happy piranha that stinted our escape. Finally, grabbing our gear, we head home for another plan, parachuting west across the map past other floating islands and looming metal mountains, we find a shrine surrounded by golden dwarven statues and many, many alphas. 
turning out to be the nexus of Svartalfheim. Sat an anvil, allowing us to realize the steps ahead needed, cubes to face the guardians of the map with unknown resources to activate. Stepping out, narrowly missing the alpha surrounding, we finally find a Maywing to tame, but get taken out suddenly by a curious Andrew Sarkis. Come on. Can I get can I get on there? Yes. Yes. Right. <gasps> Dude. Now, with all gear needed in a lifeless body, forces us to race back on foot as quick as we can. Running into an aggressive Maywing and dying because their eggs looked too tasty and running back again to finally make it. Sadly, the Maywing died, but knowing we'd passed one previously, with Rexes approaching from all angles, we narrowly swim our way to safety, avoiding even more and reach our desired steed. Trapping it in place, knocking it out, and being forced to feed it raw meat was half the challenge. The second half being a wandering Andrew Sarkis getting ever closer, with time ticking and naturally being right next to us as the Maywing tamed. Pursuing us, we managed to saddle and burst to freedom and finally own a Milkers to open up the map. We wake up to darkness, having our door hacked down and fed narco berries and another lurking dodo, but compensated with an afro once again, and a refounded quest to build something stronger to keep any further trolls at bay. Equipped with metal tools, grinding tooth and nail for stone, we work our way through enough foundations and set the layout for our new haven. Learning a new tier to build something aesthetic, we model it around a grand staircase and a somewhat butchered roof, but finally setting stage for something to be a little prouder to live in. And after a short exploration, gathering crystal and viewing the many homes littering the lands, we find a high level Maywing to tame and secure a second wind for the inevitable death of our first as we prepare to venture the map. A new day dawns with a new roof and moving everything into the new home, with a plan to explore the map. First up, the remote islands south of the map, sporting a fortress as we find it infested with dwarven knights attempting to run us off. But with some careful maywing manoeuvring, we manage to nip our heads into the fortress, give up and proceed to slay a few dwarves from range, granting us a new mithril ore resource, obsidian flux and more gold. We got some mithril, some obsidian flux and some gold. Huh? There you go. It's kind of annoying that I couldn't. Oh, he got. He lost his hair, then it came back. All right. Then. Passing by the anvil terminal again, reminding us that the resources must be connected. We head on north, being granted passage by another survivor, introducing us to a dwarven forge that accepts mithril to smelt, powered by something other than gasoline, and showing us another dwarven forge location to remember later. Exploring further, we find the Redwoods, a bug biome and statues guarding a familiar Durin looking door, with no passwords muttered for access and no seemingly way through. Merlock, Bellock, Friend, Melon, oh no, 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 go away, how do I get in? You can, that, that door can definitely open. Heading to the snow, we find another dwarven fortress filled with late game resources, food, and a few rewarding blueprints that may come in use later. And finally, a lava biome, sporting a magmasaur themed cave like we've seen before. So we place a bed and prepare for some naked runs. Getting closer and closer with each run, we finally realize what the end awaits. And well, the invitation was a bit more crowded than expected. As a last ditch attempt to grab a magma egg, we take the original milkers in at speed, time the jump as well as we can, and after grabbing said egg, fail. So we scrap the plan, and with milkers the second, set out to find an S variant Rex. After scouring the map, we finally find a high level Rex, lure it to an opening, and after attempting to gain an advantage, realize some gates are needed to trap it fail at those, accidentally send it into the water with a mate bear, spend hours luring them apart, and finally trap it in place. 
and after several trank arrows realise we haven't got enough and attempt to club it to sleep, with another survivor coming to the rescue and throwing us some more tranks to finally take it down. Waking up to a Thanos makeover and the base given a lick of purple, catching our paint bandits in the act, we let them go after some interrogation and prepare for our next tames. Needing some resources to set us up for a soul terminal, we head back over to the Dwarven Snow Kingdom for some more easy light resources. Craft that and a soul gun to allow some sicking on dinos. Passing over the villages erected, we find a small Bronto gang to send our newly named S Club 7 on, farming plenty of meat and hide and able to trap it back quickly once finished. Noticing Fjordhawks or Svarvenhawks lurking nearby renews us for another take on the Magma Cave, but not before heading home. Farm plenty of berries and fibre with Milkers the Second, set up a spoiling barrel for quicker spoiling of meat and get crafting narks in the bucket load for a mate pair S Rex. Flying about looking for high levels, we run into some chickens. Question why? <laughs> what is this? Why is it big X? Oh no. Don't, don't demonetize me, YouTube. Continue on around the map and finally find a decent high level Rex, ironically, right by the base. Trapping became a bit difficult than expected with poor positioned gates, then a mated rex and an alpha raptor, buffing the rex to barely take any damage and the trank arrows shut fruitless, but saved by a passerby killing them for us. We eventually take the rex down, hitting it as it dropped and ruining a perfect tame, but we needed a mate pair so kept it in the hope we might find a better rex later. As we plan the next stage, we're greeted by an old friend who'd adventured his way here, Vino. Hey! <laughs> you made it! I came through! Hey! <laughs> well done, mate. Do you like my hairdo? What happened to you here? I got trolled. Yeah, I got trolled. Oh, nice. Yeah, the community are very welcoming here, mate, so expect the same to happen to you too. I like your monkey. It's. it's, uh, it's a, hey, it's Duke. Uh, the, 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 the face only a mother could love. <laughs> and after laughing at my haircut, invited him into the tribe and helped fortify the floating island. Naming the male S Rex Blue Steel, we take him home, get an egg bread, and set out to find a Fjordhawk. But it appeared Svarvenhawks became rarer than they should be, with most replaced with crow like Corvus. No idea, but no time as we desperately search for the much needed shoulder pet. Finally, finding one, mind you, a low level one, we attempt to tame it using the Rex, but with a lack of dinos around, an army of dwarven warriors ambushing us, one of which gets kill stolen, we accidentally hit the Fjordhawk and lose sight of it. Heading back to base to restock, we find another old friend, Krabby, who, after some admiration of my fan painted signs, makes us a tribe of three as we leave her to grind and continue the hunt for another Fjordhawk. Finding our first beaver dam along the way, we finally find a new one attached to the water like a magnet. And after a successful attempt with an Ovis, we accidentally hit it with the Rex, resetting the taming progress and rage quit the idea to jump straight back onto the original plan. Whilst a Fjordhawk would have made it much, much easier, more stats in us makes it a much quicker run down to the Magmasaur cave and making our way through, we find much less lurking about and an egg ready to steal. Heading back down armed with sleeping bags and parachutes, we make it once again, only to find out someone had snuck right under our nose and took the egg, leaving us with only one option, to head even further through the cave and attempt to get those eggs. And surprisingly, the run went better than expected, riding a Magmasaur and parkouring our way to a death. Now, with an egg on my body, we attempt many, many runs to get it back, failing each time, but getting closer and closer until we finally manage to get it and race home for freedom. Waking up, we find we've been trolled again with an entire purple base makeover as well as Venos and Krabbies, with a new aim to set turrets up to keep the trolls at bay. Starting us off, we finally upgrade to Flak, and before preparing for some crop plots, notice turrets nearby to keep us light on our feet. A chicken man following us, as well as the previous troll returning for more. 
Running to find close resources, finding clams full of silica pearls nearby, sets us up electronics to place a Jenny, and needing to breed out new Maywings in case milk is the second dies, a nanny place to take care of them with automated imprinting and feeding. With another visit from our regular troll. Gathering some poly from penguins and air cons down, we start incubating our eggs, craft an S plus crafting station, and go to work farming stone and wood to make our crop plots. Compost bin for fertilizer crafting, but realize a toilet might be the better choice. Grabbing more mats from the dwarves, we head back, hatch our first babies, milk as the third, nips and tater, grab a dam's worth of pace, lay some pipe for our toilet, and set out for explant seeds. Passing by the swamp before, we dive straight to the spot, luckily finding some immediately. Heading back and setting up some taps for our crap plots, we notice Krabby had been hit, move her loot bag to somewhere safe and attempt to fend off the troll responsible and get a bad case of the runs to make a wealth of fertilizer to start growing our plants. Fending off the local troll again and again, and again, who scares our baby Maywings off the island, needing us to chase them mid-flight and pick them back up and realize perhaps they'll be better off bred safely in the base. Next up, farm a Maywings worth of narco berries, craft up some more narcs, fend off the troll once again and again and again before setting off to find a mammoth. Not having much joy finding a mammoth, we do find something, only an almost max ascendant long neck rifle. So head back home, craft up some simple rifle bullets and receive a visit from a new ally, showing off the fat head of Denonicus and offering some help to defend the base to fend off our regular troll again. Tranks crafted from the bullets, now Vino wakes up in shame, naked and colourful to put his door back up and we get happy with the troll again. With another failed look for a mammoth, we head back home to find even more allies turned up to fend off the troll. Look again for a mammoth and run into some fans who made this social experiment worth it. How are we, are we all doing? Oh, is this Rosklar? Hello, mate. Oh my God, bro. No way. I love your, I love your, I love your stuff, dude. Oh, I can't I'm, I'm you. oh big love back no to you, way. mate. Bro, uh, I just saw you having a little gas bag before I come and say hello. Bro, you're amazing. It's like, holy crap, I cannot believe you're here. Oh, no bless way. you, cotton socks. Hello, peeps. No I just saw you, I saw you talking, I thought I'd come and say hello, but, uh, you know. I'm looking for a mammoth, have you seen uh, anyone? Have you seen one of them? Oh. Any mammoths? Have you seen who? Oh, mammoths? Yeah. Oh, I have not seen Bye! Hi, see you Bye Roz, we love you! Pinching some oil, we finally find the Denonicus nests, holding a very high level egg. Get warned about Alpha Denonicus about, and after some back and forth to the area, find a second egg, hoping that'll be enough for a mate pair and kibble breeders. With the Rasol squad on patrol, we fend off the troll once again, start incubating our eggs, and get greeted with even more allies beating their war drums ready for the next visit. Holy hell! No! <laughs> yes! Oh my god! The most dramatic movie you will ever see. There you go! And finally, we find a high level mammoth. And after some struggle to separate it from the herd, finally take it down with barely a few shots from our long neck. Only to find the troll had returned and knocked Parasaur off the ledge to be killed by wilds, leading the Rasol army to kill their Maywing and finally knock out the troll to be chained up, caged, and finally offer us some peace. Now with one troll done with bringing the community together, we set off for crops in some local farmland, pop them in the mammoth's bum bum, and protect it with some spike walls whilst it eats. Needing turrets desperately now, and refusing any to be gifted from other survivors, we set out to make a grinder to hit the level requirements needed. Bump into perhaps the best creature saddle I've ever seen, and desperately search for more dams for some much needed paste. No joy given, we decide to craft it instead, farming 
some chitin from mountain scorpions, picking up our towned mammoth, and finally amass enough for a medieval grinder. Grinding resources doubled with toilet experience, granting us the level needed, and only shy by a small amount of paste, found at a local large beaver dam, finally gets us the turrets needed, to at least look menacing whilst we log off to make bullets for the next day. Somebody's done something, yes, yes, yes. A bad morning to wake up to, being raided and some damage done to the base. At least the Danonicus were hatched and grown up, but with one step forward and two steps back needs everything to be rebuilt. Adorning a new Stavros and Chop's hairdo, we get breeding the Deans for Kibble, rebuild everything to get us back on our feet, and set up our new Maywings with the Rexes outside for breeding, realising a perimeter fence is going to be needed soon. Making a small stock of bullets for our rifle, we set out to see how quick we can take out the enemy dwarves for loot, finding a rare large beaver dam on roots being beaten to the dwarves, so head back to set up a fridge to keep items from spoiling, and a cooker for kibble, trying a medieval version that didn't work, so revert to the normal way to cook. One extraordinary kibble made, we take Manny the Mammoth out to farm as much wood to burn for charcoal, needing to build a ramp to get us back up to the base and head back to the Dwarven Stronghold to take out some warriors. Not getting much from most, but some offering obsidian flux and an improved hatchet, and head to another stronghold in the swamp for Mithril. Being told by other survivors that alphas might be the way we take Dinanaras to find one of the new alpha variants on the map, hitting a few drops for flak and saddle BPs, settling with an alpha raptor, and using rocks as best as we can to have the high ground. Using the Dean's bleed damage, we finally whittle it down to death, gaining a new pick, bullets, and a few more new resources, including a brand new diamond one, with no idea of its use yet. Needing some automation for egg hatching, we head out for keratin, grabbing more drops on the way, finding some roll rats to set us off in the aberration cave, a spino blocking our escape, and some turtles to polish off the rotor, placing our nest down and being introduced to another old friend, Bitmore Dave, to join the tribe and hopefully help us out later on after the jump to freedom. I, I'm, I'm, I thought I'd come in game to, to advertise my premiere. No, I'm joking. Um... <laughs> 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 oh my God. What happened to your head chops? Why have you got mushroom chops? Oh. Powered up with a bunch of reef fertilizer, we get incubating our eggs and go hunting for a baryonyx to prepare us for some cave exploring, not finding any but realizing darkness is settling in, so head back home to wait for daylight. Crafting up some turret ammo finally, only to get sponged almost instantly, but obviously working as some troll repelling, we set up some more trank ammo and set up a tree sap tap to ready us for veggie cakes later. Heading into the swamp full of overgrown giant skulls, foreshadowing what was to come, we find a barry, sadly at a low level, but find a hidden swamp base, seemingly weak, but with its owner inviting us in to show us the base location, finding it to be a pretty epic location indeed, a giant bioluminescent chamber full of space with so much to explore, we forget about Milk as the second at the entrance that dies to dwarven warriors, needing us to struggle back to base and running the strongholds again to set us up for another day with finally our defenses back to where we were three days ago. Waking up to another day, surprisingly not trolled this time, but almost every bullet sponged. We hatch every Rex egg we've got to get a perfect stat breeding pair, killing off the useless ones for levels with a spare TARDIS for later. Grabbing our sap collected and making ourselves some veggie cakes for the next times, we use all Danonicus eggs for as much extraordinary kibble as we can. Grab some more drops and resources, rewarding boxes out in the wild, and set out looking for snails and berries. Narrowly avoiding the odd Capro entertaining, taming a max aloe and forgetting it owed to probably never using it, our search results in fail, so we head back to base for a minute to say hello to Krabby. Hello! Hello! <laughs> you alright, Crabby? I'm alright, how are you? Good, good, good! Not bad! Oh! I'm just a boy oh. here Oh, look, you're a Santa! Yeah, you're, um... Blue! <laughs> I'm pink! You, that, that's not pink! 
That's the bluest blue I've ever seen. Have a laugh at her purple bushy makeover, check out the ab cave and ask passers-by, with one finally shouting out a snail location for us. Knocking it out with ease, we almost get mauled by a thyla, but with survivors gathering to save the day, another calls out a Barry location. So we head over to that tame too, set up a cage for Gary and look to make an S plus collector. Local cacti farm to craft it, we head to the magma cave to farm sulfur, regretting it instantly with one hit from a golem and decide to craft it with an S plus grinder, allowing some automated paste collecting. Heading out with blue steel for a hide farm to craft our expensive Barry saddle, but not coming away with much, we get looking for Ovis, finding one pretty quick and realize a chainsawed sheep is by far the best hide and mutton farm in future. We head home to craft our expensive saddle, bump into Dave who knocks us out and craft some epic Viking armor for the next adventure. Realizing perhaps it would be best to assess what's to come, we set up some beds and challenge Krabby and Dave to some naked running of our first artifact cave. Bobbing and weaving, sleep inducing welcome parties, Dave being killed by cave walls and finally grabbing our first artifact, noticing a secret breakable rock nearby for an ascendant pick. Heading back with the loot, we find out there was more than meets the eye in the cave. So head back suited and saddled, grappling up to a hidden ledge and pulling our tribe up with us to find an abandoned mine with a wealth of resources and a winding tunnel to a death drop and one hit breaking Arthros. Realizing the path through might be a bit too dangerous, we set up some beds halfway through, noticing some in-game death bags harvestable for actual ammo and push on through. Managing to avoid the bats nearby, we find another breakable rock, realizing a manticore themed arena. Holding our second artifact as well as ascendant giving chests, ensuring many runs will be held in between days. With one last challenge by the community for the day, to beat a mini Tuzo, and actually pulling it off with our Drew Barrymore rewards us a few black pearls to use another day. Waking up to another day troll free, keeping them at bay with our two turrets, we set up a little welcome present as well as a drop run spawn for the artifact cave, running into the occasional rubble golem. But the Ark Gods looked upon us favourably today, as we found an Ascendant Rex Saddle BP, setting us up for the challenges ahead. Rex breeders grown and ready now, we get the best stat parents mating for guaranteed eggs, and keep one to take out into the wild, but needing a lot of hide. Now, finally adorning our green throw, we go running for drops, grinding for levels, making more extraordinary kibble, and get hunting for hide. Finding the odd sheep to chainsaw for plenty, and come across a high level gas bags we decide to tame as a weight dino. Realizing in a bloated status they are perhaps one of the most difficult tames around, but having invested too much time now, whilst feeling like we're definitely doing it wrong, we grind through the pain and tears for an entire a day like there's like cool elite brackies like on the map to, to check out but nah i'm just saving a, a silly gas bags i'm just gonna just keep going for it i think now i think i've had like two shots on it that were, were good we've invested too much into it now consuming more trank bullets than almost needed for a giga and slowly losing our sanity finally knocked out our soon to be named rage clark is left with kibble on as we head back to base, out to chainsaw some brontos for much more hide needed, and finally make our Ascendant Rex saddle, running the grinder for more experience, and get told of an Alpha Denonicus in the wild. Looking bigger and meaner than most Alphas, the saddle really sets the bar, allowing us to kill it with relative ease, and grant it some more of those new precious resources. Running back to claim our tamed gas bags, we run into a survivor who had previously destroyed a bed of ours, offering us a dire bear as an apology that we couldn't refuse, and get back to base to grind out our final levels to set us ready for the sea. Scuba crafted, now we take a dive into the sea to see what secrets await. Discovering an aberrant cave and being aberrant, the only raptor variants that can pounce on us, resulting in our quick death and desperate run back on Milkers the Third. 
We quickly explore the cave, noting a wealth of metal around, and set back out to find any other caves, running into the Ardmosa to scare us off, a sunken fortress with seemingly no loot within it yet, and a fallen statue surrounded by silica poles to gather and prep for electronics, finishing off the day with a new run at the very first cave, having a speedier stat now and finding it to open back out to the overworld. Flying back home, we run into another survivor who shows us the underwater entrance to another artifact cave and set up a spawn to run it naked in case all else fails. Finding a chasm, we take the leap only to find pressure plates launching a narc trap and a visit from every cave bug known to Ark. I didn't pick up the bed either, damn it. Is there no way out? There's no way out! <laughs> I didn't pick the bed up, damn it. <laughs> we run again, grabbing the loot crate and a convenient bear saddle to lose it to the bugs, accept a probable loss and run again, this time making the jump but finding a blocked up wall, needing us to run back in with gear this time. We get through to find our next artifact, as well as its guardian, an unexpected guardian at that, bleeding us out, but luckily getting a shot off to grab the remaining loot and head back out, deciding to get our bear saddle back and regretting every second as we desperately grapple out to freedom, hunted even more once out and just about getting free and our artifact safely home. A grave day to start, setting out on Milkers the Third to be taken down by Dwarven Scum, and with the good stats gone, needing a search for a new generation of Maywings. In fact, S variants, being told they exist only within the underworld. No joy finding any we take to the overmap, with still no joy, but do find another high level S Rex that might grant us a better health stat. Trapped and taken down, we go searching for S plus milkers again, narrowly avoiding a cave's worth of death and get distracted by a high level Andrew Sarkis, sazzling up and riding its mini game, failing one for it to be attacked and lose all taming affinity, needing us to knock it out to try again later. Taking the Rex home with a cheeky gas bag saddle left on it, picking up a boss shotgun on the way, we fail at another Maywing search and head back to the Andrew, find a lovely looking green macaw, which becomes a much more painful tame than we needed. With no joy on S Maywings yet, we set out to hunt the new Alphas, take out an Alpha Rex with relative ease owed to the Ascendant Saddle and a blue glowing Alpha Denonicus that gets beaten to but told of an Alpha Ravager in the underwater aberrant cave, coincidentally finding one and rewarding us with an energy crystal, the first time seeing one and needing them for the later challenges awaiting. Heading back to the now awake Andrew, we find it to have been tame initiated by someone else, trolling us from being able to and get hunting for Alpha Thylers, needing to kill everyone in the area. No joy finding one yet, we do bump into a max level, needing to be sent to sleep and head back again to the underworld, noticing some Esme wings in render, but not anywhere visible. Then being reminded of rare flowers to attract them, working exactly as intended and bringing down a high level full fat S variant for us. Heading back to the Thyla hunt, we run into a Pelovia we tame as a present for Krabby and carry on munching through the night to find the elusive Alpha. Breaking it up with a gas bag's metal run needing a lot for the next base upgrades, we search once more with no joy, but a berserk raptor rewarding us at least something for the day before retiring to breed out our new Maywings. Being offered to breed full fat milkers with an ally's S Maywing births us some beautiful new green coloured milkers, as well as some boss stat rexes for fights later on. We get hunting for sheep, getting stuck in the swamp and narrowly escaping death on the run out to race home and cook up some veggie cakes. After a lengthy search are told of two Ovis locations for both male and females, allowing us to breed for some easy hide, mutton and Svarven hawk taming later. Oh man. Who's this? Oh, what you doing? What can I see a neighbor you? Scared up. Oh, you have to boy. Oh, okay. Thank you very much, mate! 
Oh, it's gone. Being visited by another suspicious player, we decide to start fortifying the base location, starting with a behemoth gate covering the teleporter and in making a perimeter fence realize a serious stone farm to be needed, and set out looking for a Dodicarus. No joy yet, we run into an Aurochs trapped by survivors for us and being told it to be a great weight creature knock it out, noticing a high level dode nearby to take out too and cooking up some kibble for it, saddling them both up and utilizing the cart and automatic dode swipes for some simple stone farming, but not enough stone farming, leaving us to think up a new strategy. Needing black pearls, we take a godspeed dive into the blue and finally find a wealthy location near some volcanic rocks, needing a bit more crystal nearby to craft our farming setup. Mining drill crafted and combined with the gas bags allows us for an insane amount farmed per run, becoming a little too overconfident and almost losing it all to a UT squad with passing survivors saving the day, taking them out and allowing Rage Clark to live another day. Perimeter gates all set up to finally keep our creatures. It's time to set up a proper base, removing the second floor and everything over to one end. We get the new Dynamicus breeding for better stats, finding a great saddle for them a few days previously and set out to work upgrading the stone to metal, figuring out the size of our indie forge and how to build the base around it. But realizing a lot of crystal needed for glass walls, we set out to the underworld on Rage Clark. Glass walls up and around the base, we set up the second floor, figuring out how to maximize the space for crafting with a lot of OCD and far too much time figuring out aesthetic railings. Finishing off the roof but realizing it clipping into our forge and looking a bit ugly next to our stone structures, we shell the whole base with a stone and tiled surround, feeling success made in making a merged PvE and PvP base. Onto actual turrets now, we set up our hatch frames, again figuring out how to make it still look PvE, set up our new storage, a few turrets popped in and a criminal amount of time on how to place a toilet. Having been raided again in the night, a rush for more turrets began, starting with a new line of Rexes raised and grown now, and get raising sheep for easy mutton later. Heading out for another alpha hunt, grabbing a few red drops en route, we run into an incredibly high level wild rex and despite the 150 poor rolling rule, knock it out with the help of a friend. Needing a good source of electronics, so needing a pearl collector, we dive into the sea looking for anglerfish, not finding a single one and race back to the tamed rex to be reminded never to tame a max level again. Gifted a few presents and handwritten notes by the community and dive into the magma cave to find a better egg with milk as the fourth, surprisingly bobbing and weaving our way out to freedom. Just. Heading back home, we get greeted by a suspicious player who we warn off, reminding us how desperate we really are for turrets now. Throw out our gifted Pingu and Happy Feet, apparently being good for passive poly and hugging, receive some temporary troll protection and dive back into the sea for the elusive angler. With still no joy finding any, we get alerted of a new type of polar bear that provides poly too, and after a failed search for that, get told of anglers in the aberration cave, realize we'd been sent on a wild goose chase, give our new penguins a cuddle, and return to look for this polar bear. Another failed search, we break it up with another magma cave dive, head back to our TARDIS to be allegedly hit with a DDoS attack from a previously banned player. Yeah, uh, to be honest, I'm surprised it's it's took this long for someone to do this. <laughs> no, yeah, uh, it's a shame. Managing to get back to base after a server restart, we get hit again by the DDoS are needing to pull our server provider's G portal to resolve. Whilst we head into single player to figure out if anglers really do exist, finding they don't and yet to be patched in. And with the server back up, we head back to the snow to find a Kaloponamus. What? Needing to be passively fed with Polly, which we rip off some local penguins and dangerously run at the polar bear shoving Polly into it until claimed. Finishing the day off with another tense run into the magma cave, 
with our escape blocked. But then, being warned of a berserk brachy roaming the lands, we take to it with TARDIS thinking we could take it on our own, and with the DDoSer back needing to call in the community support to take it out as quick as we can. Rewarded with some precious resources and talking to the group about the win, we help out a fleeing Maywing being chased by an Alpha Raptor and uh, die laughing. Right in the lag, and um, more than likely stressing it to the point where the server gets resized. Alpha Raptor. Oh my god! <laughs> Save it! <laughs> Save it! Save it! <laughs> Back to base, we check in with Krabby, prepping to move to the smaller island via her floating bridge, and get hit again with the server stress, needing to pull in server support once again. With the server still down, we join the map's creator to check out the content coming to the map next, get an insight of the next set of caves to drop soon, and begin to realise we may be reaching the final day before the map's even finished. Taking another precious dive into the magma cave for our best egg yet, we finally take out Winnie the Pearl and test to see exactly how useful it is, being on par with anglers and finally possessing something that can gain us electronics. Back to base and realising we need to move the breeders away from the base, we slap down a chem bench for some easier gunpowder crafting, craft up our electronics and fur set of turrets and gates to wall off our breeding area. Flooding up our perimeter for the birthing area, crafting a minimalistic breeding station, we get DDoSed again, leaving us to fly about in single player and look at what else is coming to the map soon. And finally, back up after some lengthy downtime, we head back out for pearls and, with all oil rigs reset on the map, dive into the ocean to hack away at oil rocks. More poly needed now, we take to the sunken aberrant cave with Yogi, finding it to be a great source from the plants inside, and finally start crafting turrets and bullets, throwing a few up and roof protected crop plots to hopefully pop some X plants in later, with another magma cave run with Milk of the Fourth attaining invincibility. Needing a beehive now, we set out for rare flowers, taking Yogi to the swamp, destroying the competition, gaining us some dwarven loot, plenty of flowers, and running into a cow. Deciding to tame the bus, being gifted some kibble by a passerby to claim it quicker, and a mate pair for our polar bear from a proper Englishman. Thank you so much. Oh, no, no, no. For the sheep that was just here. Do you know it went? Oh, well, if you follow on down the path, Bear him right, take two steps and a click to the straight hunt at 12 o'clock. You should find the Avis. They're all shiny and one ready to go. Well, thank you so much, sir. Quite, quite very nice of you to say the sort of thing to me. Thank you so much. Splendid, you so much. splendid old chap. Jolly ho. We get udder jumping with Cowbell and its milk, throw up the beehive, fur, and explants into our new crap plots, craft a bunch more ammo and get our turrets powered for at least some defence. Waking up to a new day, being notified the turrets indeed work and roof plants grown, we go for another magma run to get a high level egg. Coming away with a half decent one, we set out on Rage Clark for a wealth of obsidian and oil, chuck out our new baby creatures to raise up, and needing lots of sulfur for magmas, go on a liquid hot lava meat run, grinding away more bullets and mats to hit the next level, and upgrade our cooking pot to an industrial tier. Irrigation set up, we mind wipe to reset our engram points, craft an egg incubator for quicker eggs hatched, empty our bowels, farm a lot more sulfur, discovering the crystals down in the magma cave, reward element shards and how much experience we're gaining from the magmas. Go hunting for more alphas with no joy, give back the loot from the dead Maywing to the survivors shut down, and farm ourselves a boat worth of pearls. 
On the hunt for woolly rhino horns, we bump into a high-level Corvus, and being told they're useful for crafting, struggle to tame one with metal and spoiled meat, using a tent to keep it in one place, hatch our S magma sores, and take to the island fortress to one-on-one -on -one the dwarven warriors. Oh! Oh, I missed him! Come on, headshot, headshot! Headshot! Let's go for it. Oh! Missed again. Missed again. Oh, that's a... Oh, that hurts. That hurts. Nick and neck. He lost his beard. It come off. It came back on. Damn. Looking for rhinos once again with little joy, we find a few alphas to kill and claim some more precious resources. And then, disaster, as another server crash arrives, with us staring a terror bird gank in the face eventually locking in to say goodbye to Milkers the Fourth. In with the new, we say hello to Vino, chainsaw some more sheep, take out a few more alphas, gaining another horn, realize how good chainsaws are for electronics on tech dinos, and hit some more server stress right under the nose of a berserk bracky. Saved by Vino whilst trying to reconnect, we guide him to the Aberration Cave, save a dying Maywing and forever lurking for the elusive woolly rhinos, run into a Princess Peach castle built by the World Edge and with knowledge of probably falling with the next map update, warn them of a probable base loss. So I gotta put up my se I gotta put on my serious voice to tell you some grave news, mate. Um yeah. this build when the map updates will be wiped because of where it is. No. Yeah, like like number one rule with this stuff, never build by the borders, mate. Because obviously, you know, the map's going to update. But yeah, Nakata's just confirmed it in the chat. And I thought I'd, I'd, I'd tell you now. So you've got time to move it before the next map, map update. Sounds like I need to find a new base. I, I know. <laughs> I'm so sorry to be the bearer of bad news. <laughs> but I thought, I'm glad well, you... At least I can pick it all up. Exactly. I can, like, like, reuse it somewhere else. It's better to be told now than for the update to hit be hit and your base just all, like, like be blown to smithereens yeah, or whatever. No, so. exactly. Still on the hunt, we run into a max level high melee theory. Not able to pass on it, we trap and take it down and rush to quickly make our kibble. Heading back to throw our crafted kibble on, we find someone was kind enough to do it for us, only for the server to get hit again, the theory to wake up again, and needing to be knocked out again, only to be kicked again, logging into a face full of theory and racing back to attempt saving our fellow survivor, to no avail. So we knock the thing out again, keeping a close eye this time whilst Vino attempts to take his dode opposite us. And after more server disconnects, finally tame it. After even more server dropouts whilst hunting for the invisible rhinos, we do run into something we hadn't seen since the early days, poultry. And with a few seeds and clucks, take home a pair for some finger licking meals later on. And finally, after days of looking for them, two rhinos get called out, bringing our horn count to the total needed, and heading back home, find a bizarre vertical structure towering towards our base. Realizing it to be a tribe plotting to raid us, we attempt to fend them off with trank darts, keeping them at bay for so long until we're out of ammo, and call a truce for them to warn a proper raid would be coming soon. Experience Brath finally crafted, we dive back into the magma cave at speed, killing as many as we can to gain experience, not realizing how close to death we were, and shortly learn experience gain wasn't as high as hoped. Oh, I'm in the verge of death. I'm on the verge of death. Crap, crap, crap. So, dart off to find alphas, only to realize we dropped our gear off in the cave in panic, losing some of our best armor and needing to craft it again. 69! Using big brain, boosting our crafting skill and improving the flak blueprints crafted a little, we set off for another naked magma run to no avail again. Begin to layer the foundations and walls for our first proper turret tower and run into some high level stegos, realizing if we plan to raid anyone ourselves, we really need to start breeding some pretty soon. 
Raising up some more baby sheep and levelling our others for Svarven Hawk taming later, we have a base tidy up and assess our new resources and how exactly they're used. Being gifted some stegos to breed by a token survivor and having a better rex to breed out now, we go on a shotgun rampage on our weaker rex eggs to gain some experience, doubled with some loose bowels to get us ever closer to the magic 100. Another survivor turns up with an incredible gifted rex and with a warning they'd be coming to raid us soon, meaning a imminent need for heavy turrets. So some more baby rexes to meet a desired demise. Taking our new resources to the Dwarven Forge scene earlier, we figure out how to power them with energy crystals, smelting our mithril into ingots and then into alloy with our obsidian flux, being followed by a concerning stalker. Checking the anvil obelisk out, figuring how much alloy we'll need and a Giga showing up realises how difficult a base defence might become, so we head to the floating island to far more mithril from the Dwarven Knights, and a bunch of resources stolen from our previous stalker, but managing to get something out to make a start. We head to the snow fortress to slay more dwarves for mithril, and on the way home notice a floating base belonging to the tribe that plan to raid us, and using some maywing hang time we manage to get high enough to take a closer look, take to the swamp for some more loot and have to protect milkers from an unfortunate cryo sleep, hunting some sarcos for those much needed skins. On the hunt for rhinos to fight gigas and alphas for diamonds and the odd croc we realise more snake venom is needed, so take to the artifact caves to collect, resulting in a struggle's escape to freedom with all grapples gone. Fortunately, a survivor arrives to our safety, allowing us a safe passage and we find a berserk Utiranus to beat down with TARDIS. Dirty Pego. There we go, Alpha UT or Berserk UT. Dead. Right, oh, let's see if he wants to loot though. Do you want to loot, mate? Because it was your find. Still on the rhino hunt, we take out a few more dwarves and finally find ourselves some Svarven Hawks, tamed with our leveled and slaughtered Ovis. And finally, with a small wealth of electronics, we start building our turret tower, taking time to layer the structures in the hope for some defense and take on some more alphas for those precious diamonds. Finally, one rhino knocked out. We get gifted a therry to breed into our lines, with another friend diving into our turrets to gift us a fat-headed Anonicus, a rare find nowadays and abilities leaving us in awe. Rhino tames with some cheeky gifts left on it, we get farming some mats, craft a small army of bullets and a rainforest's worth of trees to convert into thatch with our multiple grinders, along with some broth and poop XP on top to level us as quick as we can to the magic number. With a few more baby rexes slain on top and almost a day's worth of grinding, we polish off the goal with an alpha rex, finally allowing us to make heavy turrets. But not before I dice with death and a cryo sick rex. Taking out a new rex now, a tree mistimes our fall, almost spelling a rex death and carry on hunting the requirements for Broodmother. Tree, you bum! What? What? In what world can you ever do that? I'm dying. Help me. Finally, we run into the rarest drops on the map a cyan beacon. And for good reason. Can you wait for me to collect the drop before I uh, start talking? Uh, earlier in the day, Hedrock in informed me that somebody was having trouble with like foundations related to me but I don't know how since I'm just in the corner and I try and manage to make sure I don't have foundations too much everywhere. Uh, if you know anything related to that, uh, please inform me. I have no idea mate. 
taking on more alphas, we head back into the caves for some more snake venom and home to hatch out our new batch of dinos. Finally, erecting our tower, breaking it up with a surprising naked magma egg run, we slap our hatch frames up to finally have something half decent for protection and craft our heavies for finally some solace. More pearls for electronics gathered with cola, we throw down some crop plots, slap our turrets in place and finally block off the way up to at least keep any unsuspecting survivors at bay. Another pearl run down, we get looking for tech dinos for some easier electronics. More Sarko skins and alphas done, another cryo sick rex and finally a mate pair rhino in our life to breed some giga defense. Learning of another troll on the map, this time harassing other players, we serenade them whilst trapped and take our horned friend to breed. Hip me where the wind blows, ah, oh, blows, doesn't really matter to me, to me. Dun, dun, dun. Mama <laughs> just killed a man, put a gun against his head. Another day, another pearl with some wood farming thrown in for good measure. But being informed of burnt trees gifting charcoal in the bucket load if farmed right, realize how much quicker bullet production can be and head home to shoot Vino and lose touch with reality. <laughs> Stealing my resources. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, last stream, I collected like a thousand fungal wood, and now it's gone. I need to like, what are you doing? <laughs> 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 it's intense. Look how possessed. Doing. Do my shit. Oh no, bro! Oh, I'm spazzing out. I'm spazzing out. Shit, I'm having a seizure. <laughs> oh, what are you doing to me? <laughs> oh, you're more turrets built now, we throw up more protection around the base, learn of a big update coming to the map, realising we may actually complete the map in some form now, and hatch out possibly the last dinos we'll have bred ready for the final day. Pumping health into our Rex roster for the upcoming Guardian fights, we realise they're short of a few levels needed and a lot of saddles to farm for. With the S Magmas finally hitting adult and a survivor gifting us a cheaper blueprint to save us a lot of time. So the hunt begins, killing our last few Sarkos needed for tribute items and Brontos to chainsaw for hide, levelling our Rexes at the same time and almost losing Milkers the fifth to the swamp. Get out of the fig! Flip it, Axie! Dude! Milkers! Oh my god! I beat a bow! Oh my god! Barry! Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh my god, Milkers is getting absolutely battered then. A few berserk variants found to level our Rexes some more, being helped out with hide farming from a fellow friend, a few more alphas killed and a lot of chainsawing for even more hide. Cooking up mind wipes to craft the best possible saddles, we get gifted a few more blueprints to complete our flag set. We farm some more poly with Yogi, taking to the snow to nab some more from penguins and the dwarven boxes full of loot and mind wipe ourselves to max crafting skill, along with Big Brain to craft all of our saddles needed, as well as every other blueprint we can. Running the cave for some more shotgun shells, we get hunting for more alphas for experience, being told of a high level Rex wandering the map and taking a beating to slay. A fear evolved candy gifted to boost up Milka's speed and a few berserk Danonicus done with, we realise it's becoming slow progress with days ticking down and after another alpha and some baby Rexes sacrificed, go farm as much wood as possible ready for a new plan. 
with a bobcat offered to us, no idea, and a bit more wood to get us up to the quota, we grind out a few more turrets and bullets, get our gear prepped in the case of failing brood with the Rex squad, and get Krabby to jump on each Rex whilst we run multiple grinders, boosting them with shared experience to the levels needed. And set stage for a call back to the times of old, marching all Rexes to the obelisk one by one, the great march onwards, guided by the community, wondering if we'd be setting ourselves up for failure, to finally reach the Anvil Shrine, met to an allied audience of Rexes who wished to join us and help beat traditionally one of the hardest alpha bosses in the game. But this time, in its own Spartalfheim themed arena. Rexes are, Rexes are moving in. Pushing in, pushing in. Here we go, here we go. Alright, alright, it's hitting, it's hitting for big numbers, but ain't bad. Wow, it's like volcanoes around. And webbed bodies. I love this arena. <laughs> I don't think the I don't think the cars is here. <laughs> That's crabby. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, boy. <laughs> If they win the car, it's going to three times the damage. <laughs> oh, this is it! Yo! Oh, Alpha Brood! Get involved! With a brand new update to the map and new caves to explore, we open the Door of Durin to venture into the Mines of Moria, a lost dwarven city breached to a room nodding to a previous fellowship's journey. Finding abandoned homes surrounds a new dwarven forge and a gold ingot resource obtainable. Heading deeper, running into aggressive cave lions, forcing us to Mount Ras Clarkio, we pass a cave full of gas veins, poly and more cave lions. Deeper still, we open out into a huge aberrant biome filled with the regular nasties and finally linking up to the original underworld intersection, realising a milkers is needed to venture with more speed running into another explorer who shows us another cave inside. Filled with spinos to farm for the next guardian, we find a crawl space at the end, inviting us to face more minions on foot, bending round to our next artifact, a few more drops and a search for any further hidden secrets. Recalling previous inaccessible caves, we race to each, finding one to be open now, but full of poisonous gas, booby traps and lovely inviting bugs. And after several failed attempts to run naked, head home to craft some gas masks. Taking out the locals, we find a room full of buttons to access the right door and manage to open one that leads us through to perhaps the most difficult puzzle scene yet in Ark. And after a criminal amount of time, manage to pass the spikes. Oh, he caught me! Grabbing our next artifact and Fjordhawk home to venture back through for the next door. Passing through, having to avoid more booby traps and inviting crocs, we finally discover our final artifact for the next guardian, with another secret door that took us far too long to open. 
onto our tribute items now, killing the local Megalodons with Drew Barrymore. We head to the obelisk to uncryo our Rex squad, needing a while to wake up and meeting with our friends made along the way who wish to run it too, all contributing what trophy items they could to run the Alpha Monkey Awaiting. Assessing what were Cheyenne, we smelt our Mithril in the new Dwarven Forge and take to the mines again to run into a Berserk Ravager, rewarding us with a new saddle variant, and take to the Spinos to reward us with the last few sails, setting us ready to make the cube of the Megapithecus. Head back to Ob for a crawl dance and launch our next boss fight. Beaten with relative ease and rewarding us even more tech unlocks, we set up our replicator, needing a remodel of the base to do so, taking almost an entire day to just about fit it in the base, and finally get to work crafting tech items, with a Jenny in to cover the base and more pearls farmed for enough electronics needed. Now ready to farm element, we head into the magma cave with TARDIS, burn a horrible, horrible death and realize we need to leave our trusty Rex on going to town whilst we quickly farm as many element shards as possible with our drill, just about getting him out with an inch of their life. Farming even more pearls, we hatch a few theories and finally craft tech turrets to make our base a bit stronger and ready to take on the worst yet to come. Knowing a raid from the entire server was imminent, we begin fortifying the base as much as we can, tearing down the gates, defending the teleporter in, and many, many more tech turrets. Learning of enemy fobs or planning to scale the walls from below, we prevent our turret tower from being rushed on foot, and set up turrets all overlooking the edges. Polishing off with some vault drops to cover our Jenny, we meet up with Krabby and an ally to prepare us for war. And what a war. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Here we go. What the, what is this? Yo! Come over here! This is, look, the house being built! Get the get the check! Get the guns! Get the guns! They're gonna they're gonna bring in stegos! Go, 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 go! Shoot that thing! Shoot that thing now! Oh! Whose turrets? Your ours! What? It's our turrets, dude! Oh come on! Uh uh Rocket then? Oh, is that gonna 
Oh, I'll take rifle. I don't, I don't, yeah, I don't, that's going to take ages. What the hell? Oh my god. You kidding me. Oh, the... hello there, Ross Clark. Get out there, mate. You're not ready for this. I, I can see. Oh my god. What? What is this? Attack! What Attack is this? Go away! <laughs> what is this? A glass platform wedge? There we go, there we go. You're not ready! I need, I need to throw it up, otherwise he's gonna come in. You're not ready! What? <laughs> <laughs> it's just still, it's still up. What? What? What's going on over there then? It's another wedge gun. We're, we're making a pattern in the sky. The stagos. <laughs> uh, oh! Oh! The stagos have come off. The stagos have come off. Someone shoot! Oh, they're shooting me. Oh! One more! No, I did it! Damn it! Not good! Is that spiders? What? No! I got him! I got him! I got him! Are you afraid of spiders? I, I am afraid of spiders! I'm gonna web on my bum 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 bum! Brands are in brains! What the hell? Is that like loaded with C4? What's that? Oh no, it's got spiders on it! What? <laughs> what the hell? Oh my god! Take that, Brad! <laughs> <laughs> That's just hilarious. The entire time, just Stegos have been like launching. It's so funny, dude. Bring the extinction stuff now. Just <laughs> <laughs> <I'm asleep. laughs> <laughs> get you woken up. <laughs> what? What you, what you talking about here? Oh, you put it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're chill, Ross. <laughs> chill. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> What's the issue? I just come. I just. I just come to say hello. It's just a prank, bro. It's just a prank, bro. It's just a prank. Don't do it. Don't do it. I think he's gonna get you, Eddie. Just look at the state of it. Oh, dude. Uh, uh, oh no, oh no, here we go, here we go people, go, 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 flip it egg. <laughs> nah, we said anything goes, uh, we did it, we never set a rule on this. Oh it's my. Done. Is the shield down? Shield down? Yes! Woo! Go, 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 go! Oh my god! That's a big dude. Oh no. Oh no. Oh my god. Oh no! Oh! Oh! 
What? <laughs> Crab is on it, sweet. The stats that goes all oh, over no. the shop. Oh, no. What's that? What's that? Going? What is going on? Look at all the bodies. Oh, oh turrets, the flame turrets down. With this blooming titan looming over the base. Oh no. Oh no. Um We might have some it we might have some issues there, people. What is going on up there? Can you more chickens? Okay, I can hear them coming. I can hear them coming, man. The chickens are coming! Oh my god. Like I don't even I don't know what the hell's going on. The Titan is bugging people out. Alright, I'm not taking damage. And I'm like, maybe they are right. Oh! Oh, oh yes! <laughs> what do I? What? What do I do with this? Alright, camps. What's the sit trap? I see yeah. a forest I don't even know. I, I, what? What the hell did we do with that? It's down here! Oh my god, it's doing some damage. What? There it is. It's here! That's the. It's at the base! It's at the base! Ah! Go away! Get, get, get back! It's not your gaff! Oh my god! No! No! They're coming in! They're breaking through! No! The roof! Come on! Oh, this is it! This is the end! Come on! Ah! I gotta, I gotta stand on that and get some, get some cover quick. No, the roof! There's no roof! Get me down, get me down, get me down! He's dead! Oh, he's dead! Oh, it's dead? He's dead! There's not a lot left, though! There's not a lot oh, left! God, he's killed him! Ah! Uh. Just gotta move! Gotta move! New Potter! I got no reason! <laughs> oh no! Again. What? 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 Spam the fish. Let's go! <laughs> Let's go! Oh! Where's he at? Where's he at? Where's he at? No! Oh my Giga! You Giga! <laughs> oh my god. Damn it. Yeah, I, I did that ah, that's a hit. <laughs> oh my god. Oh! Oh! 
the kicker! Oh, I thought, I thought the kicker was going for me. Come on! Yeah! Let's go! <laughs> Let's go! Oh, dude. Go. Yeah, I'm stuck upstairs. Yeah, hang on. Oh my god. Oh my. <laughs> oh, the door's gone! The door's gone! Oh no! <laughs> oh, my God. I can't. I can The state of this, I can't even get to my gear now. You're not <laughs> oh, there's a man here. No, no, that's it. Oh, no. I think I got, I must have got a few. Did anyone fall asleep then? Did I get anyone? Please say I did. <laughs> the bugs everywhere. Uh, the, yeah, I got one, brilliant. Oh, oh the door! That's it! Oh, God. That's it! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no, that's it! Oh, you gotta do, you got. Just get the, get the thing, man! Alright. What? What? Nah, who was it who got in? Yeah, yeah, GG. He was in, man. That's it. The, call it. It got in. It got in. Call it. That's it. That's it. We're done. By far, one of the best raids I've witnessed with the champions deserving of some free trolling and barely half a base left with one last challenge to complete this run. Setting up the gear required but not being patched into the map yet, we had to try and see if the Dragon Guardian was possible. And with barely half an arena made yet, well... Sure now, right? I'm wearing Gilly, Cactus Breath, and all that jazz. I should be far en enough away from everything that nothing comes for me. But the trick is not to shoot the dragon until it lands. If I shoot, this is something we used to do back in Legacy. Is we used to wait until it landed, and then it had full aggro on the creatures, and then you could kind of exploit it a bit cheesy. There we go. Right then. Oh god, uh, is it bugged out? Alright, well this is as good as we're gonna get. I've, I've chipped away, I've took a little bit off itself, look. Can you see? Can you see that fraction that's been took off? We got no chance, we got no chance. Whoa. Alright, let's go for that jump. There it is! It, and it's stuck!
thought he stuck. Yolo! Yeah! Oh god, man. Damn it. Damn it. Dude, I just had something with a bit more punch. Can I climb on the dragon whilst it's alive? I'm not sure how I would. Whoa! Okay, that's a mesh. And that's it! Thanks all for watching. If you want to watch the entire streams playthrough, I'll leave a link in the description to the playlist. But this has been Svartalfheim, one of the best maps I've played on that's not even finished yet, and I hope you will too. My name's Ras Clark. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And as always, peace out.